Welcome back. Now we are going to construct a confidence interval with some paired data. We'll use the same problem as we used last time uh, about matching tires. All right, we'll have a pair of tires of a certain brand. We'll randomly assign one tire to hold air and one tire to hold nitrogen and check on them a year later. And uh, we'll look at the difference in uh, amount of pressure lost, right, in pounds per square inch. So uh, last time I probably uh, was missing an important word here in explaining what the parameter mu is. So I made put this in bold this time that we're uh, measuring air pressure loss, right? So the numbers were greater for air, so we had... Uh, because it was the amount the, the tires with air had a greater loss, right? And so air minus nitrogen uh, turned out to be positive for most of the pairs of tires and certainly turned out to be positive on average. So we had very significant evidence, right? Very statistically, a very statistically significant p value, which was practically zero leaving little doubt that the amount of loss for air, tires filled with air, was greater on average than uh, when filled with nitrogen. So, all right, so now we're saying we want to estimate mu, the mean difference in air pressure loss in tires, right? Taking uh, the loss of air minus loss for nitrogen. So we, we would expect this to turn out to be uh, positive, I think probably not contain zero in our interval when we get done. I also put some units on here this time. Uh, pounds per square inch is how we're measuring pressure. All right, so are we feeling any pressure or you think you know where we're going with this one? I think we got this. All right, so conditions. Nothing's really going to change. Um, these will be the same as last time. All conditions are well met. We do have a sample size of 31. All right, so now remember that, you know, I'll point out here, we're saying we satisfy the condition of normality, so the sample mean would be approximately normal. But when we do our calculations, we're actually doing T procedures, so we're usually using a T distribution, which is an offshoot, I guess you could say, of the normal distribution, it's slightly shaped different. It has a little more area under the tails, a uh, little less area in the middle, and it's compensating for the fact that we're having to substitute the sample standard deviation in for the population standard deviation. In real life, if we don't know, say, the mean of a population, how would we ever know the standard deviation of the population? So. Gossett was the uh, person who was credited with the T statistic, sort of secretly uh, had to do that because the company that he worked for, Guinness, uh, he wasn't able to publish under his own name since he was an employee of that company. All right, so anyways, uh, that's uh, enough of that story. Um, Gossett made up for the fact that we were having to do some estimating by establishing the T table. And as we get a larger sample size, the values on the T table, as you go down the table, the sample size is getting larger. And as we get a larger sample size, the T distribution approaches the actual normal distribution, all right, because it gets to be more and more the same shape. All right, so little review of some concepts there. Okay, so the calculation, we want to make a 95% confidence interval with degrees of freedom being 30. Okay, now um, meanwhile on our calculator we already have the data. Okay, so on your graphing calculator your data is probably already there. So just go to the T interval uh, it's just one sample, all right? We're doing a match pairs design. Uh, we're not doing a, we're not drawing from two, uh, two populations, okay? 
just think of it as one population. All right, so we're going to list three here and uh, doing a 95% confidence interval. All right, so there's the confidence interval. All right, now it's just about like showing uh, some work. All right, so I, I put the formula here. Okay, so for inference, you got to name the process by name or formula. This time I had both. Earlier I call it a paired T interval. And now I'm putting the formula. All right, so uh, X bar, all right, is the mean of list three. All right, that's the mean difference. That is our estimate. So we're starting with our estimate. Then we're adding and subtracting the margin of error. All right, so you can find on your AP formula sheet, you know, how to set up a confidence interval, all right? So the critical value for T is part of the margin of error. It's like how many standard errors should we go to the right? So remember we represented an interval as like a dot with a segment extending to the right and a segment uh, extending to the left, our confidence interval. 95% confidence means... If we make uh, many, many, many confidence intervals like we had on the app, right, 95 of those intervals, if we keep repeating this process, 95% of those intervals will capture the true mean difference. All right, so um, how uh, I got to talking about this is that um, from that dot, our, that dot is our estimate, 1.252. We're going to go so far to the right, so far to the left. We're going to go this many standard errors to the right and, and to the left. And this is what one standard error is. Now, the uh, sample standard deviation is, uh, you know, or the standard deviation is 1.202. Right? But we have to, to divide by the sample size of 31 because remember the bigger the sample size the more that cuts that down and the skinnier our distribution of the sample mean would get right so all right so this is the uh, standard deviation here or standard error of the uh, sample mean and then this so that's how big that is, and then this is how many of them are going to the right and to the left. All right, so all together, this is margin of error. And this is our estimate. A statistic is an estimate of the true population mean. All right, and the true population mean is going to fall in between these two numbers, all right, lower and upper estimates. All right, so there's our calculation. And then um, uh, we can make a conclusion. And uh, where did my conclusion go? It was, uh, I thought I had it there. Did I cover it up? Ah, there it is. All right, watch me pull a rabbit out of a hat. Bullwinkle. No, Bullwinkle said, hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of a hat. All right, so we are 95% confident that on average tires filled with air lose between 0.811 and 1.963 more pounds per square inch than tires filled with nitrogen is one way to say that. All right, if I was using Fathom, all right, I would have this spreadsheet here, all right, and last time I did a test this time i would be doing an estimate drag the estimate over here and we got to choose what we're doing here it says it's an empty estimate all right we want to uh we want to estimate a mean well there's also difference in means now that would have been section 10.2 all right we're just going to actually choose estimate a mean because uh, we're trying to estimate the mean of list three after we already subtracted and got the differences of each individual and a paired uh, procedure here uh, we're subtracting values from the same individual and then getting a mean right not two means and then taking a difference just getting 
um, mean of the differences, which we already established in list three. All right, so then I would have to drag, all right, drag the attribute uh, difference, or diff, I called it, and um, it already had 95% confidence interval. I could change that if I wanted to. It gives me the same values. All right, if I want to make that a 99% conf confidence interval, uh, if I want to be more confident, I would have to widen the interval. All right, so uh, that makes that should make the interval uh, wider, and it did. All right, if I were to say 90% uh, confident, all right, then it's a narrow, or I can make a narrow interval. I'm making a bolder claim, but I'm less confident about making a bolder claim. All right, and that is uh, how you go about making a confidence interval and how you're going to write it out and get a perfect score on the AP exam uh, for a paired T interval. All right, so now you can complete lesson 10.3, and I'll give you a couple days to do that. Next week, next week, middle of next week, we're going to have tests, so let's be ready, and I um, uh, hope you're enjoying AP statistics. It's pretty fun at the end when you can actually do something pretty cool like this, right? Have a great day.